This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean, Lisa, and Laura head to Ketchewanooka Lake for some late summer carp fishing. Sean and the girls booked into a resort located at the northeast end of the lake, adjacent to Young's Point on Highway 28. Ketchewanooka Lake is part of the Kawartha chain of lakes on the Trent Severin Waterway. This area is part of Peterborough County in Ontario. Ketchewanooka Lake is a 1 hour and 45 minute drive from Toronto, 2 hours and 15 minutes from Kingston, and only 20 minutes from Peterborough. Young's Point offers a convenient general store, carrying everything from beverages to fishing licenses. Adjacent to the locks, you'll find specialty stores that the ladies may just want to browse or shop in for hours. The particular resort that Sean chose for this trip specifically caters to carp anglers. The popularity of carp fishing in Canada has only recently begun to increase. However, in Europe, the story is quite different. Billions of dollars are spent annually on carp fishing and related products. In addition to their regular Canadian guests, the resort owners Trevor and Judith Holloway accommodate numerous British and European anglers each year. The resort offers everything one might need for a fun trip with family or friends, including rental boats, comfortable self-catering cabins, and pre-baited swims. If self-catering is not your cup of tea, Judith can arrange to prepare some of her delicious home-cooked meals for you in the main dining room. Get up to the Kawarthas for some explosive trophy carp fishing, and you may just land that next 40-pounder. This week's target species is common carp. Other popular sport fish species available, mirror carp, walleye, muskie, and panfish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. I tell you, it's non-stop action here today. The girls actually went off to get changed. We were expecting rain today, and uh, it's actually turned out to be a beautiful, warm, late summer day, and the fish of biting. It's a lot of fun and unfortunately they're going to miss out on this one. I mean with the scenery around us and the beautiful crystal clear water here, well, you'd think we were uh, 500 miles north. We're actually only an hour and 15 minutes from Pickering, about an hour and a half from downtown Toronto. Let's get her back in the water here. Whoa, there she goes. I tell you, let these guys go. They're a lot of fun. Get up here in the Coatas, only an hour and a half from Toronto. Here's the girls. <laughs> You just uh, missed the fish. Oh. I see you look a uh, little more summery now, eh? That's nice weather for September. Look at these pink uh, <laughs> pink skirt shorts things, whatever they are. Oh, that's now, perfect for fishing. There's another fish about the same size. Fish it, huh? All right. Okay, Laura, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going off it. Eh? <laughs> so you remember how you did it the last time? I will try. You're a pro now, eh? Yes. We're going to be staying on the bank tonight to do a little night fishing. We're going to stay in the tents because we want to be close to the pod. We don't want to be too far away from the rods. Uh, you want to be able to get on the fish as soon as they take off. Maybe we'll get a picture of this fish. Beautiful fish. Okay. We got him. We got him. There we go. You really don't want to be uh, netting these fish before they're ready. But we, were, we saw the size of this thing. We didn't want to get it away, so I kind of stepped out. Wait till you see the size of this thing. Oh it's just absolutely enormous. <laughs> if I can get you to hold the net. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the size of that. I mean, what, what could be more fun than catching fish like that? At the end of the summer in the Kawata Lakes, we're about an hour and 15 minutes from Toronto. We're up here at a resort that specializes in carp fishing. And uh, Trevor was kind enough to go out and chum for these things, and it looks like it paid off for us this morning. We're actually going to get a weight on that fish, and uh, we're also going to get a picture of you holding that. That's a fantastic looking fish. That's a great Congratulations. fish. Congratulations. Good job, boy. That fish is high 20s, maybe, maybe touching 30 pounds there. You ever caught anything like that? No, no? I haven't. <laughs> Are you in shock? <laughs> yes, no, it's, uh, it was much harder to pull in than the other one. All right, let me get... I knew it would be heavier. I'll get the hook out now, actually. Perfect. And that, I mean, look at the size of this fish, and then look at the size of that hook. That's all you need with these carp. So the largest one caught that's been tight. caught in this water is around 40 pounds? 41 pounds, yeah. You can see these larger fish are a lot cleaner than the smaller ones. They get caught a lot less, a little bit smarter. Okay, 
the scale there. The reason we use this waist sling is that you don't want to be sticking this hook into the cop's mouth. You know, I say it every time we do a cop show, but I can't say it enough that... Okay, there we go. Between 29.12 and 30 pounds even. All right, we'll get a quick picture. I'm going to leave it in this sack. It's nice and wet, and uh, we'll get a picture of this fish. CPR, brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. He is very heavy. Yeah. Okay, hold him up. Okay, perfect. All right, there's fish jumping everywhere here. Smile. Perfect, one more. Okay, let's get her back in the water. Good job. Thank you. That's amazing. You're the first person I've taken out who's never fished for carp before and ended up getting a 30 pounder. <laughs> Just look at this, she's got slime on her shirt to prove it. <laughs> All right, look at the thickness of this fish here. I want to let Steve come in here close to get a shot of the back of this fish. Look how thick that is. Put your hand across the back of that fish just to see. I think because it's 30 pounds, you got to give this fish a kiss. Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> Slime on the lips. Perfect. Okay. And there she goes. All right. Cool. Fabulous. How did Thank that you. feel? Incredible! You did a great job, I gotta tell you. I mean, fighting those fish is not easy. There's a lot of weight there. Well, excellent. We gotta get a 40 now. The challenge is on. That's right. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Laura's 30 pound carp was cruising the edge of a navigation channel. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The water in the channel was 12 to 14 feet in depth spanning approximately 40 feet across. The edges of the channel consisted of boulders that were placed to act as a retaining wall to prevent the structure from failing. Sean set up his rods on a point, allowing him to strategically place his baits in various locations along the channel. Carp were relating to this area, treating it somewhat like a submerged highway as they cruised up and down, vacuuming up the free offerings of maize, boilies and trout pellets. The strike zone was a 100-foot stretch of channel, Using the red marker as a reference point, Sean cast to the following areas. Rod 1 to the far side of the channel, Rod 2 in the center, and Rod 3 was cast to the inside edge of the channel. This strategy allowed the entire span of the carp highway to be covered. Laura's fish inhaled a tutti fruity flavored boilie, fished on a 10 inch hair rig below a 2 ounce method feeder. Ground baiting is key to keep the carp feeding in an area. Trevor headed out in his boat early that morning and threw out a good quantity of bait. It wasn't long before the carp moved in and began to feed. In addition to ground baiting, Sean used his catapult throughout the day to fire out particle baits, such as boilies and canned corn. As you catch fish throughout the day, throw out additional offerings. If the fishing slows down, try dipping your particle baits in flavorings. It can really pay off. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Oh, he woke up. Might be bigger than we thought. Actually, I couldn't ask you to get those forceps for you, but I forgot them again. Fun, eh? Oh, yeah, he's really pulling yeah. out. Try to keep your rod, like, brace tight. I know he's heavy. Uh, a lot of people actually frown upon carp as a sport fish, but you can see they're very worthy. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's get him in. We got, oh, there we go. I got him. Perfect. I'm just going to unhook him right here and okay. let him go. Cool. So nice seeing him swim away like that. There we go. I tell you guys, I haven't had a break here today. <laughs> I'm, uh, this thing's just taking line on me here. I've had, every time I go to sit down, we get a fish on. <laughs> We've got lunch sitting up there and uh, I don't think we're going to get to eat today. This sure beats sitting in the office, I bet, eh? Oh, certainly does. Both of you goes. Uh, well, you spend some time on the road, right? But uh, you spend a lot of time in the office. Too much time in the office. Yeah. You could be out doing this every day. It'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> do you find there's a lot of uh, or there's women that do a lot of fishing, or is it more just that they I, go along with? Yeah. You know what? It's interesting you say that because last year we noticed we were starting to get a lot more female viewers emailing us through our message board. 
and uh, I definitely invite you to do the same thing if there's something you like or if there's some constructive criticism you have. We have a message board on the website. Feel free to go there and put up your uh, comments and uh, you know, post your fish pictures up there. You might just win a prize. Who's up next? I am. It's got to be you. Lisa, the 30 pound queen. Well, I'll tell you Laura. what. Oh, that's right. See, I did it again. And I gave them the different colored hats, and I still got it wrong. That's all right. Everyone else does the same yeah. thing. No worries it's a nice to fish. it. It's a nice fish. It's a All these people that were uh, making fun of you for going carp fishing, and you at home, too. Get out there. Give it a try. It's an absolute blast. You two will vouch for that, right? Exactly. Oh, there he goes. As far as baits today, we're using boilies. They're actually freshly made and ordered from the States. Tutti Frutti has been by far the most productive today. We're fishing those on a hair rig, about uh, 10, 10 inches in length. Gonna need a bait needle to get those onto your hair rig. Right below a method feeder, which we're putting on a method feeder mix. As far as uh, rods go, we're using 12 foot, two and a half pound test curve rods. We've got a large bait runner reel here, spooled up with 30 pound test braid. Uh, very important to have the bait runner, especially when you're fishing in the rod pod that we're using. And uh, you can see that these fish have a lot of power here. You need that bait runner system so that when you, when you leave the rods unattended in the uh, rod pod, it's not going to pull it right out into the lake for you. The rod pod we're using is a European style pod. It's got fully adjustable legs. We're using three electronic digital bite alarms. They've got a volume control and a tone control on there so that you can set the tones differently to identify which rod's going off. We're also using swingers behind those. What they allow us to do is if the fish comes towards us, the swinger will drop. If the fish swims away from us, then the swinger will come upwards. You always want to make sure you've got a waistling with you, a good scale, and uh, a good landing net like the one we're using here. You're going to want to make sure you've got a good pair of forceps with you to get the hooks out. An unhooking net is uh, key if you're fishing in uh, places where there's rock and stone like we are today. That's another nice one. Wow, we gotta weigh that. Pre-baiting is the key to the success of landing these fish. You've gotta keep these fish feeding in the area. Uh, we've been using maize, uh, high protein trout pellets. And what that'll do is it'll set up a sort of a field along the, like a grazing field almost for the carp out in the channel here. Make sure you've got a good bait catapult. Shoot a few boilies out around your hook baits like we did out by the market here. They'll come in and start feeding on the boilies and eventually pick up your hook bait. And then you're going to hook into a beauty like this. Kawatha carp. Eh? Who the fuck is Perfect. The twins get a double header, eh? <laughs> All right. Fishing in the Kawathas, you got to give it a try. All right, okay. Look at him, he's just... All right, get him in. Oh, yeah, he's a nice fish too. There we go, perfect. Two in the net. Double header with uh, two of the most beautiful girls I know. <laughs> And, uh, well, thank you. What more could you ask for? You shouldn't talk about the fish like that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's... Uh, that's Lisa's. Yeah, getting you mixed up again, see? <laughs> twins for the twins. Yours, I think yours might be a little bigger, I don't know. I think that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Am I the luckiest man in the world or what? <laughs> All right, let's let him go. Hi, buddy. Perfect. All right, girls, slime me. All right. I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're going to keep fishing. Unfortunately, we're out of time right now. But uh, I want to thank Laura and Lisa for coming on the show. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, you enjoyed yourself? Had a great day. Yes, it's thank you very much. Lots of fish. You've got to get up here in the Coatas. We're on Catchawanooka Lake. Go to our website for more information. I'm Sean Rickard. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for yet another urban outdoor adventure.